Yo, what is up there, guys? I'm the Wiz, and back at it again with another Kingdom Hearts video right here, right now. So let's get right to it. Today, we will once again be checking out the good old Kingdom Hearts character files, this time focused on none other than one of the most controversial worlds within the Kingdom Hearts series. Oh, you know it, you love it, and you really, really hate it. I'm talking about none other than good old Atlantica. Oh, boy. Oh, does that bring me back. Atlantica was probably one of the most unique worlds within the Kingdom Hearts series, and also one of the most frustrating worlds at that, let me tell you something. When I look back at my younger days playing Kingdom Hearts 1 for the first time, this freaking world, the flipping dolphin, the wind cavern thing, spending hours and grinding trying to kill Ursula, when all you had to do was use magic on the stupid cauldron. <laughs> I was so young and naive, but luckily for us, Square Enix learned their lesson by saying, you know what, forget making improvements to this world, let's just make it a singing minigame thing in Kingdom Hearts 2 and also make it optional and call it a day. But hey, I'm not gonna lie, I would always go back to that world in Kingdom Hearts 2, just for the undersea section of the world. Plus the interaction that Sora has with Ariel and the rest of the gang is always a cool thing to see, not to mention them singing such iconic songs like Under the Sea was an absolute thrill. I really <laughs> love that world back there. But, you know, back to the topic at hand. Let us check out Atlantica's short story titled Under the Sea provided by KH13. So without further ado, here we go. I always thought that I was good at swimming, but then I got turned into a fish and boy was I wrong. It was pretty difficult and until I was able to swim properly, I was in a bit of a pickle. I was a fish so it wasn't too bad, but maybe it was a lot more troublesome for Donald who got turned into an octopus or Goofy who got turned into a tortoise or maybe it made things way easier for them than for me but anyway being able to swim freely through the sea was amazing and singing songs with Ariel and the others was a ton of fun too though it was hard for all of us to sing and dance at the same time but when we got it right I felt like I was walking on air I'd like to sing with everyone again someday Ariel's longing for the surface really reminded me of us before we left our journey. The feeling of wanting to go someplace unknown and see things you've never saw before. I really got that, so I wanted to support her, especially because the person she loves is there. And while I hope everything works out okay with her and Eric, when it comes to King Triton, he isn't saying don't go to the surface just because. I think he's just worried about her. And while there will be some obstacles along the way, like Ursula, so long as she sticks by Eric, she'll be just fine. Speaking of Ursula, she appeared on Destiny Islands in my dream. I wonder why she was there. Well, Sora, the simple answer to that question is, you know, we simply just needed something for the tutorial stage. But yeah, I always thought it was kind of weird that out of all the characters, Ursula would just appear out of nowhere. It's like, whoa, haven't seen you in a while. But out of all the characters that got turned into like, you know, part fish in Atlantica, I feel like Donald probably would have had the most trouble swimming, seeing as how he grew like four extra limbs to work with. That's more work for your guy. No wonder he wasn't healing us because he was focusing on moving under the sea. But yeah, I really like the connection Sora makes with Ariel. Honestly, you can really ship Sora with any Disney princess character, or any character for this matter. He works with anybody. <laughs> but they were both young and adventurous, wanting to reach out and see more of what the world has to offer than where they already are. That's why when I saw that Ariel summon in Kingdom Hearts 3, boy did that make my heart jump. Like, Sora is really out here showing Ariel parts of his world, the world. <laughs> But then again, it kind of saddened me realizing that it's not the real Ariel. These are Link, so to me, it's always been like a spiritual version. So it's like, ah, that's kind of lame. That's why I've never really been fond of Link's. But yo, when it comes to that Ariel Link... Oh my gosh, she's such a lifesaver, the most OP thing out there. So kudos to your girl Ariel for really saving the day, especially with a lot of these boss fights. The data battles, oh yo, they did not see her coming, let me tell you. But after looking at the worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3, especially the Pirates world and how large the underwater segments are, yo, I could kind of see Atlantica working out really, really well. Although I gotta admit, I wasn't really fond of the whole water mechanic that they had going on in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, it was new and interesting definitely but I much prefer to use all my regular moves under the sea but that being said once again I really wouldn't mind Atlantica coming back I feel as though it could redeem itself kind of like how it pirates redeemed itself you know everyone was 
talking all that trash about pirates, but then came Kingdom Hearts 3 came along was like, hoo -hoo, what were you saying back over here? So I would really like to see Square Enix take another crack at Atlantica. It would probably be one of the most best looking worlds, honestly, because you have this whole underwater theme setting, the plants, the reflection, all that stuff. It could work out really, really well, although I'm not sure story-wise how they would implement it. I mean, they could follow the whole melody thing, which is Ariel's kid, but time-wise, that doesn't make any sense unless they do a time jump themselves or a world line thing i don't know the kingdom hearts has got really crazy and convoluted that honestly anything is really possible square enix could technically if they wanted to make up their own original story for atlantica and involve melody although melody would just be like a baby so she wouldn't be like i don't know however old she was in her actual movie and now that i think about it technically at the end of kingdom hearts 2 sora never did see ariel actually you know marry prince eric so that would be really cool especially now that we have this whole you know basically canon at this point so kai thing sora and kairi i think it'd be really Really cool if you were to find out that you know a true love prevailed and Ariel was actually able to get with Eric although I'm pretty sure at this point since Sora and Kairi shared the pow poo fruit it's all in the bag so no need to worry about that but it would really be a nice cool thing for Sora to actually go ahead and find out and see but yeah guys that is basically it for this video just another insightful you know look at how Sora thinks about these worlds which is really cool because we don't really get to explore too much of that you know once Sora gets into the world we're immediately jumped into the the action so it's really cool to see his thought process and how he feels about the worlds and yo I just I love all these worlds and all the different things that Sora learns from them whether it be new abilities or just life lessons is really cool um, just any of the old worlds bringing it back into Kingdom Hearts nowadays especially with the graphics would be absolutely amazing you know I'm just waiting for Agrippa to return I can't believe it didn't make it but you know darn well that world's got to come back somehow so guys what I want to know in the comment section below of course is hey what were your thoughts of Atlantica you know back in Kingdom Hearts one and of course the whole singing section in Kingdom Hearts 2 do you think Atlantica would make a return someday or do you think we should just like nah forget about that world so guys if you like the video make sure to give it a big massive thumbs up as it really helps me the channel out quite immensely if you aren't already you can follow me on my Twitter account same thing as my YouTube channel which is Ed the Wiz so until next time guys I'm gonna go ahead and say bye pal we'll see you soon